We've had a record-breaking summer of heat here in the UK, but naturally because we've booked a boat test in, the weather has deteriorated completely. We've got leaden skies overhead, high winds and lumpy sea underneath the hull. However, the boat we've come to test here in Plymouth should be up to the challenge because it's a British-built 55-foot flybridge cruiser designed to withstand the unpredictabilities of the British climate. There's no better way to see if it's up to the task then than to get out to sea and see what it can do. I'm Jack Haynes, welcome to Yacht Buyer. Even in grisly conditions like this, you can still appreciate what a pleasant place this is to drive from. I really like the driving position. There's loads of adjustment. This chair slides fore and aft. It's got a lift bolster so you can sit yourself up a little bit more. You've got adjustment on the steering wheel as well. So yeah, whatever shape you are, you're gonna be able to get comfortable here. Separate navigator seat. There isn't enough space for the navigator to get out without disturbing the skipper, which is a little bit annoying, but given the beam and the flybridge, that's somewhat understandable. It's just a really clean, classy layout. And as part of that allure pack, you have this graphite coloring, so it's not just a big splodge of white GRP. It looks interesting, it's curvaceous, practical as well. You've got cup holders, you've got a nice big storage bin for the starboard side. And this big well here is a really useful place just to chuck sunglasses or a mobile phone. But of course, the beauty of owning a 55-foot flybridge boat is that there's a fully insulated, weatherproof helm just downstairs. So let's head down there. Yeah, this is much more like it. If you've got a driving position like this, then yeah, you want to use it on a day like this. And actually it highlights what a refined cruiser the F55 is. There are two engine options there, both Volvo Penta D13 with either 800 or 900 horsepower. This boat's got 900 horsepower ones and it gives really effortless performance. You can comfortably crack 30 knots on this, whereas some of this boat's IPS rivals, they'll be struggling to get up there, but this really does get up there nice and quickly. Uh, the handling is also really, really nice. It's two and a half turns lock to lock, and then there's a really good amount of agility. It feels really stable, and it's very soft riding as well. We've had a bit of chop around today in these grizzly conditions, and the boat really hasn't battered an eyelid. And if you just want to drop down to 20 knots and get through it, then you could really cover some ground from this position, even if the weather isn't, isn't great. And, and your range is 250, 275 nautical miles at, at 24 knots. So yeah, you can, you can cover some, some decent ground. The helm position is just as flexible as upstairs, really. You have full adjustment on the seat. You have adjustable wheel. This boat doesn't have the optional second MFD down here. And that might say a bit about how this owner imagines he will drive this boat. Maybe they'll spend more time upstairs, but you've got one MFD here and you have your Volvo screen as well. But if you wanted the convenience of having chart and radar, you could spec another screen here. One thing it doesn't have is a side door, something like the Sea line F530 or the Absolute 58 has got a side door directly out onto this deck, but you have got a window with one touch control. You've got those on both sides, so you can easily bark instructions to your crew and get yourself a bit of natural ventilation as well. And though it hasn't got IPS pods, what you have got as an option is a joystick to use with the shaft drives. And it's quite a good system actually. So if I just pull it back to neutral, and what that does is obviously you haven't got the pods that vector like you do with IPS, but this quite cleverly combines the, the two shafts with the Sleipner proportional bow and stern thrusters. So you can use those individually if you want. You can just use them as bow and stern thrusters. They've got the hold function so you can push them to one side, hit hold, and it will just hold the boat against the pontoon if you're single-handed and you need to get off and tie the lines on. Or you can just hit docking like you would on an IPS boat. And then the computer is combining the two engines and the thrusters. So if you're twisting, it's just going to use the engines. It's going to put one forward, one astern, and then you just start twisting. If you want to move sideways, then you push the joystick sideways and it employs the bow and stern thruster. It's not quite as quick-witted as IPS, but it's not far off. And if you don't feel so confident with the throttles, then it's a nice option to have. So that's what it's like to drive. Let's take a look at the rest of the boat. Now, most boats in this sector carry their tenders on the bathing platform. The Prestige 520 has a tender garage, but the majority will carry the tender out often, and that's the same on the F55. This particular boat has got a Williams 435 fitted, so there's a capacity of 450 kilograms there. However, if you have the optional 
gyroscopic stabilizer, the sea keeper and the passerelle, that capacity then drops down to 125 kilograms because of the added weight of those options. So that's just something to think about if you do want a decent sized tender on the transom. And then from there into the cockpit, you do have access both sides. There's a bit of a hump to starboard because that's access to the crew cabin, but it's nice and easy down the port side. And what's nice is that it's actually quite sculptural mooring gear here. It looks really nice. It's obviously substantial. It's nice to have those fair leads built in to the haunches there as well. Finished in T2 looks really classy. You can add winches there, which you might want if you're in the med mooring stern two. You've got, thankfully, very good protection from the overhang here, and it's not just sort of bare fiberglass, there's a bit of material up here. You've got stainless steel highlights. It does, does look smart, sort of sets the tone for the interior. Good wrap seating here, and you have backrests that lean all the way around. So wherever you sit there, you're gonna have support for your back. And same as the flybridge, you have a table that folds out and you've got proper dedicated finger slots. And then when you open it up, you've got a handhold there that just falls really easily to hand. You've got storage down here for the life raft, dedicated space for that. There's another slot on the flybridge as well, but again, you can pick where you want to put it. And then we can move into the saloon, totally flat floor, so that's nice and easy. And then something that's really nice, you drop down here a step, is you have this window that pops up, easy as that. And then you have this really nice sort of inside outside entertaining area, a little bar area here so you can make snacks or drinks, line them up there, very easy for guests to serve themselves and pick them up off the counter. And they've worked storage into this area as well, so you've got dedicated space here for glasses, mugs, that sort of thing. It's all got a place. Talking of that, there's even a place for the chopping board, you know, like a good chopping board. Well, this one is also the sink cover, covers up a nice deep sink, but they thought about what you might want to do with that if you're not using it and it has a nice slot just there. So if you just want the tops clear, you can get rid of that and keep it away. Now, older versions of this boat used to have the dishwasher down here, tiny little thing, not really much use. The optional one now here, much more useful size if you've got a few people on board and that's a decent enough size. Full size fridge freezer as well. Got a freezer section down here, decent size fridge up top, induction cooking. Yeah, if you wanna actually cook on here, love on here, then this galley allows you to do that. You notice the detailing as well. This boat's in Alba Oak. It's nice, really light, brightens up this area really nicely. Not that it needs much because the windows are huge, but again, it's a nice change from the sort of walnut that you see most of the time these days. And this detailing's nice here. You've got these sort of curved two-tone effect here and then underlighting. Again, it just sets the tone, looks really nice. And notice how all these corners they're all curved, all curved here. So if you do bump into them at sea, you're not gonna get a horrible sharp corner in your side. A Couple of steps up here, and then you're into the main living area. Now, something like the Absolute 58 has got its dining area opposite the galley, which is arguably a bit more convenient. That said, this is a very nice sociable space. And this current version of the 55 has lost the sort of spear of GRP that older versions had. So you just have these big unbroken windows and they drop right down to deck level. So the view really is pretty unbroken, especially when you're sitting down, the views out, even in this terrible weather, are really nice. Now this is an option, you can have a proper table here on a high-low leg, so you can drop that down to coffee table or having up and in a dining formation. This is clearly just for, for a coffee table, but you know that's totally bespoke to the owner, as is this color choice. You know, obviously there's loads of options when it comes to colors. This is a bit different, but again, it just sort of shows what you can do with this type of boat, the sort of customization that Princess can offer. The TV is hidden away, one touch button, up it comes, you don't have to hold the button down. That's quite nice. And on this version, you have to have the generator running to get that mechanism working, which is a bit of a pain. But if you upgrade to the name audio package, this TV is then connected to the inverter so that you don't have to have the journey on to put that up and down, which makes life easier. Also, the name audio system is amazing. So thoroughly recommend that. And we just look at these seats here again, you come to the detailing. This is a new style for this generation of Flybridge and whatever would you have? As I said, there were four choices. This is Alba Oak. You have a nice inset here. Again, just adds a bit of nice detail with the stitching. You've got the Princess logo on this side. They look really, really smart. Let's go downstairs. 
Before we get down there though, it's worth pointing out the distribution panel is in a really good position and obviously this is an important part of the boat. Most people are running this boat themselves, you need to know where everything is. And this way you can see the DC AC distribution, this is where you control your generator and where you can switch between generator and shore power, but it's nice to have it in a really easy to access place and it's all really clearly labelled as well. And onto accommodation, well the physical layout is, is actually fixed but at this size you're away from the, the bunk beds in the third cabin so you have a proper twin cabin to starboard here but this has got a nice optional feature where at the push of a button the berths slide together so you can make a, a double in a matter of seconds and something else you notice in this cabin and it's something that runs throughout the boat is access behind the panels is really easy you're not having to get screwdrivers out or pop down headlinings you just push a button a hatch swings down and you can get to the back of the helm really easily for example again you may not think about that when you look at a boat at a show but if you're living with it it makes life a hell of a lot easier but let's have a closer look at the vip cabin this is the main guest cabin on board the boat and once you close that door there's plenty of floor space here you can get changed here no problem headroom's good no plenty of room above my head and you have a nice amount of storage as well. There's eye level lockers. There's a proper drawer under the bed. You don't have to lift the mattress up to use that. It would be nice to have some fiddled edging on these areas here so you could leave loose items there and not worry about them sliding off when you're at sea. But in terms of bulkier storage, you've got a nice full hanging locker here and a bureau on the other side behind the mirror. Obviously you've got built-in natural ventilation with the portholes on either side. There is no glass hatch above, there's an escape hatch, but there's no natural light coming down through there, but you get enough through these windows and obviously artificial lighting is great. And this cabin has an ensuite, though it is shared with the third cabin, but you have direct access from this cabin here. Now let's go and have a look at the master. So making our way amidships, you have day heads access to that bathroom there. And then down here is an option, you can have washer dryer as well. So that's quite conveniently located in the, between all of the cabins. And as you walk into the master on the port side, you find the ensuite and they've quite cleverly used a pocket door. So that's not gobbling up loads of space inside that bathroom, slides into the bulkhead. You have a nice separate shower cubicle, loads of storage, big mirror. That's a really good space as is the main cabin. Once you're down off that step to the entranceway, it's totally flat, no obstructions underfoot. Again, headroom is great. The bed is set much lower. It's a big bed. You've got a side tables on either side. It feels like a bedroom more than a cabin. And again, just look at the size of these windows. This latest version of the F55 has a new window line designed to really make the most of the views from a cabin like this. And nice, you've got portholes here as well. So you don't always have to rely on air conditioning. Huge amount of storage down here of all different types. You've got you know, deep drawer storage, shallow drawer storage. Then you've got a massive double wardrobe here, which has got a selection of hanging and shelving. The television at this size is an option. Not everybody's gonna want a television in their cabin, but that's a really good size. And it's of course linked up to the audio system. And then on the port side, some boats of this size, you might have a chaise long here or a bit more drawer storage. Princess has gone for this breakfast dinette which actually works really nicely. You can imagine if you're the only you've been on board for a few days with your guests, you wanna take yourself away and just have a quiet coffee. Well, in the morning, this would be a lovely place to do that. Secluded, at water level, superb views out of these windows. This is a really nice spot. So that's the very bottom of the boat. Let's head up to the top and check out the flybridge. Well, the Bimini isn't really designed with deflecting rain in mind, but it is doing a good job of it today. This is one option for shelter. It's manual, but it's really nice and substantial. Obviously, it ties down onto the radar arch and there's a couple of tie downs forward as well. And it's got built in lighting as well, which is quite nice. So you've got a bit of light up here if you're sitting up here at night. You can have a fixed hard top too, proper hard, hard top overhead. But yeah, this is a, a nice solution, a little bit cheaper as well. And then you just notice how much seating there is up here. They've really maximized seating, living space. This table obviously doubles in size. It's nice that you don't have to pull out any support. They're just there all the time as a handhold, inbuilt cup holders. You've got little slots for your fingers to make it easier to open up these leaves. And yeah, that's a really good size. And I like that there's enough space on this side to put a couple of freestanding chairs if you want even more people to be able to sit around this table and have lunch or dinner. Talking of that, you have a wet bar up here. Of course, it's quite well positioned just behind the helm seats. Lift up this lid. One thing to note, you are quite close to the steps here. So when you're flipping your burgers, don't take a step back and end up tumbling down the lower deck. But it's well specified. You've got a Kenyan grill, you've got cooling space, you've got a sink, 
typical stuff that you'd expect to have on a boat of this size. And I like the fact that they've integrated this handhold here. It's quite sculptural, not just plonked on there. Has a bit of design detail as well. The other nice thing about this layout is it's actually a typical princess trait. This area is currently in travel mode, but you can slide out that squab, put an infill in, and it becomes a mini sun pad. And you also have that upholstered section forward. So again, you can perch on there, put your feet up, just makes a bit more of what would ordinarily be redundant space. So that's the top deck. Let's go and talk about crewing. Now at this size, many people will have crew to help them run the boat, but there will be a lot of owners who run the boat themselves. So it's good to know that it feels safe if you're crewing it yourself. And it does. There's a nice gradual step from cockpit onto the side deck. And this boat has the allure pack. So you have this teak nosing that runs down over the steps with built-in LEDs at foot level. Looks really classy. And the tow rails are nice and tall. Your feet feel good and secure when you're moving forward, moving aft. And then the guardrails reach up really high up over waist level once you get amidships and you've also got a bar running all the way along the flybridge combing so wherever you are up there you'll find something to grab onto if the boat starts rocking around and then when you're up to the foredeck it's not just a sunbathing space though there is sunbathing space and it's got pop-up backrest so you can lie a bit more comfortably whether the boat's stationary or moving at displacement speed but you've also got a sofa up there and you've got a walk through deck section so it's very easy to cross from side deck to side deck so that's what it's like to crew what's it like in the crew cabin so this is the crew space. It's not enormous. A crew space is more important to you than something like the Galleon 550 might be better because that's actually got two berths. This is just a single berth. This boat is going to be shipped there and imminently, hence why there's covers and carpet and stuff in here. But hopefully you can get an idea of the space. It's not terrible. It's just you're never going to get a massive crew space on a boat of this size. And actually they've used the space quite wisely. For example, having the sink out here means it doesn't encroach on space in the wet room behind me. That's where the toilet and shower is. There's a bit of storage underneath that. There's some storage above the berth. There is air conditioning in here as well. And this has independent controls for that. And there's a bit of glazing here. So if the tender's not there, you get a view out and some natural light and there's a bit of natural ventilation up here as well. Let's go and look at the engines. There are two Volvo Penta engine options on this boat that they both use the same D13 block which is 12.8 litres inline six cylinder 800 or 900 horsepower these 900s have got 3300 newton meters of torque at 1300 rpm and they prove pretty popular because for the small increase in cost it's well worth it for the extra performance. How much does the F55 cost then? Well, that depends on the spec, but our test boat, which had optional extras, including the Allure trim package, a passerelle, own and generator, air conditioning and onboard Wi-Fi, came in at 1.78 million pounds, including VAT. We're back to base now, having braved the elements, and actually it's been really useful having conditions like that because it, it does hammer home what a versatile style of boat a 55 foot flybridge is. Years gone by, you wouldn't want to drive from the lower helm of a flybridge boat because it's so compromised. But now, today, this is just a great place to drive the boat from, and it gives you that versatility of whatever the weather you can get out and drive the boat. And actually the F55 really doesn't put a foot wrong. It's got a really nicely appointed spacious interior. It's got great deck spaces, really nice smooth riding hull. It is generally quite hard to see how Princess could improve it. And if you are the type of person who wants to use their boat all year round, it's definitely up to the job. Thanks very much for watching that review. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please do get into the comments and let me know what you thought about the review and the boat. And please do give us a like if you enjoyed it and hit subscribe and the bell icon so you're notified every time we upload a new video. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.